Well, it's been just over a year since the world shut down. But with US airlines now returning to normal operations, and selfishly because I'm now vaccinated, I think we're finally in a position to look back on how it all went, and which airlines treated passengers right and which others did us wrong. Since I know y'all are impatient and I don't want to waste your time, here's the scores and ranking I came up with. But if you want to know where this ranking came from and why, keep watching. I want to begin by admitting that I was wrong to be so harsh in my United video. I had been just spoiled by such a great experience on Delta and Alaska that the experience on United came as a rude shock. But having taken more flights since, I was wrong, and I am owning up to that. Don't worry, I will still be very critical of United, but I just want to be fair at least. It's also worth mentioning how many flights I took of each airline and when as policies and procedures changed over the course of the year, and sample size matters. Perhaps some of my observations were just a one-off. It's up to you to decide. I flew Alaska four times, but while they were still blocking middle seats. I flew American only once. I flew United Mainline only once as well, and much earlier in the pandemic. I flew Delta only once about the same time. I had three flights on different United Express carriers, SkyWest, GoJet, and Air Wisconsin, which I'll mention briefly but not really consider in my score. I only flew JetBlue twice during a relative lull in cases. Finally, I flew Southwest four times, both with and without seat blocking, though always with the limited boarding procedure. I'm sorry Spirit, Allegiant, and Frontier aren't on this list, but <laughs> not really, why would you want to fly any of those anyway? I'm going to rate each of the carriers on the following criteria. Seat blocking, overall messaging, boarding and deplaning, and in-flight service. Finally, I will be adding and subtracting points in my list of grudges and grievances section. Every wrong is recorded. Every slight against us. Page after page etched in blood. Customer-friendly policies add points, but I also kept score on every time the airlines did us dirty, and I did not forget. Do note, this isn't a review of what airline is best in my opinion, or the overall customer experience. It's just how they handled things given what they had and their starting point. These scores and service descriptions are also all on economy flights, as I don't fly first domestically. Seat blocking is an easy one to start with. Yes, I know medically it's ambiguous and airlines need to make money, but having flown both with and without, I understand the placebo effect if nothing else. Out of a possible 5 points, Delta takes 5 out of 5, as they blocked middle seats through April 2021 the longest. Southwest and Alaska get 4 points for blocking through November and January respectively. I gave Southwest the benefit of the doubt there because of their open seating policy, so you're more likely to have an empty seat next to you due to people acting like valence electrons reflecting the Pauli exclusion principle. JetBlue gets a 3, as they capped their flights at 70% capacity but rolled that back and removed blocking ahead of their own schedule. They do, however, famously not overbook their flights, so there's that. Finally, American and United never even blocked middle seats, so they get a 0 out of 5 by definition. For overall messaging, I'm taking communication when booking, at the airport, and via text message, and United actually takes it with 5 out of 5. Brand deal with Clorox, text messaging reminders to wear masks, and allowing you to rebook your flight if your flight is relatively full. Delta, Alaska, and JetBlue all get a 4. Delta texts you upon landing reminding you to stay in your seat and deplane by row, while the gate agents for Alaska and JetBlue were wonderful and offered to talk with anyone who was feeling anxious or had any questions. So good on them! Southwest redid their entire boarding area to be social distance friendly, so that gets them at least a 3. However, other communication was limited. Finally, American, um, said we were federally mandated to wear masks. Again, I only had a single flight with them, but nothing sticks out. So a 2. Boarding and deplaning is a tricky one. 
I'm evaluating it on how well people spaced out, and I understand that's also dependent upon the passengers. Delta and Alaska did a fantastic job, but they were also blocking middle seats at the time, so perhaps that skews my judgment. They get a 5. Southwest would have gotten a 5 for their boarding and deplaning, at least based on my first video. But on subsequent flights, there were significant issues with boarding in Phoenix and Dallas, as well as some stampeding deplaning in Chicago and San Antonio. So it may well just be luck of the draw. Plus, they're back on their old system now. Still, I'll give them a 4. JetBlue was a bit backed up on boarding one flight while a cakewalk on the other. A stampede to exit on one and very organized on the other. So let's say a 3. United, I was very harsh on. There was a large pack of people clumped together on boarding and deplaning was organized, but too many rows at a time were called in my opinion. All of my United Express flights though were very good, other than picking up gate check bags, so that brings United to a 3 as well. American? Well, deplaning was decent, let's say a 4, but they had the worst and slowest boarding of anyone because they didn't change their process at all, which is obviously a 0. So averaging them out, let's give American a 2. The final flight score then comes down to in-flight service, which I'll make out of three points as I feel it's less important. It's also a bit counterintuitive, as a fuller service leads to more people removing their masks at the same time, which runs counter to all of the other rating factors. So I'll rate service based on what I feel is reasonable, rather than a sneaky cut on costs. Completely subjective? Yes, but it's my damn list. Go make your own. United again surprisingly gets a full 3 out of 3, for choice of beverage and a snack bag with multiple items. JetBlue and Alaska also get a 3, they provide both a choice of beverage as well as a snack, and offer buy on board options. Delta and Southwest get a 2, as they provided snacks but only water. Again, service offerings are always changing, but that's what I got. American? Offered no service at all. So, um, 0. Again. So based purely on the flight experience, the totals are Delta and Alaska with 16, Southwest and JetBlue with 13, United at 11, and American with 4. This brings me to my list of grudges. Because when the world was panicking, when airlines thought nobody was looking, I was taking notes. And now the chickens have come home to roost. But the great book of grudges remains full. Delta took a hatchet to their award program, devaluing it not once but twice. <gasps> I'm only going to deduct one point here though for both devaluations, because anyone who puts any stock in the Delta Sky Miles program is an already a battered housewife and knows what they're getting into. Please, call this hotline. You don't have to suffer alone. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Alaska hasn't done anything bad that I know of. Yet. They did join One World, and so far so good. I'm waiting for the other devaluation shoe to drop, but it hasn't yet. I was going to give Southwest a pass as well, but literally while writing this script, they did a no-notice devaluation of Rapid Rewards. <gasps> Ugh, why? It's not that bad, I'll only deduct 0.5 points, but shame on you, Southwest. JetBlue. Ugh. They removed free carry-on bags for their safety <gasps> tickets. That's minus one. And they had the chutzpah to try and spin it as a positive for customers. You know what? Another minus one for JetBlue. United? Ugh. Well, they also devalued their mileage program, so that's minus one. And they engaged in some incredibly scummy business practices, denying refunds and attempting to redefine what a cancelled flight was in order to avoid paying those refunds. It was despicable, ended up in court, and deserves at least a minus two. But United also pushed the industry back towards flexible tickets, allowing changes on anything except basic economy tickets. And while I don't believe their motives for a second, on the whole, this is a positive for consumers. 
So I'm going to give this a plus two, not just for United, but for the impact on the wider industry. American didn't devalue their award program, but they did make a change, making basic economy tickets not count towards elite status at all. <clears throat> this is of course bad, but United was already doing it and I personally gave up on American status years ago. So minus 0.5. American also raised check bag fees and thanos millions of American Airlines miles out of existence, but I'm not gonna deduct any more because I don't want them to go negative. So the final scores are thus, Alaska in first place with 16 points, Delta in second with 15, and Southwest in third with 12.5. Of course, we've yet to see what travel will be like in a post-COVID world, so we'll have to keep watching. And let me make it clear, I feel comfortable flying on all of these airlines, especially now that I'm vaccinated. But when booking your next flight and you see all the flights are the same price, remember who was good and bad to us passengers during this time. You know who I'm gonna reward and who I'm going to punish. That's for sure. Thanks for watching. Do you agree with my list or have your own ranking? Let me know down below. Subscribe for many more flight reviews to come and I'll see you on the next one.